One, noun, the lowest cardinal number, half of two, pronoun referring to a person or thing previously mentioned or easily identified by a person of a specified kind. One can be a number marking an item at the top of a list. It can signify that a person, place, or thing is of a singular state. Oh, and did you know it's the only in integer not to be prime or composite? All right, I'll stop with the nerdy math facts. I'm not here to bore you. But I still plan to focus on the number one. In our culture today, one of something seems small. Who only wants one scoop of cool, creamy ice cream when you go to an ice cream shop? The answer is very few people. Hence why there's now a Guinness World Record for placing 121 scoops of gelato on one ice cream cone. Whoever would actually be crazy enough to eat that would surely get some intestinal pains later. Ouch. But you get my point. Things more than one are just more appealing. Objects represented or found as one are becoming less and less appealing to the world as a whole. Being the one to be different, the one to stand out, is not fun. And most of us can relate. We've all been different. We've all been the one. You were the kid tagged and ducked up goose by the fast kid. You couldn't catch him. You lose. It's a bummer, and you were the one. Whether or not you're the one who dresses differently, the one who likes different things, or the one tagged in duck duck goose, we have all felt the pressure of being the singular. To continue, in spite of one being a large and crucial aspect to our everyday lives, many ask, how can one person make a difference? How could I make a difference? It's actually really easy in some situations. You just have to put in the hard work. Yet, the common thought today is that there's always someone better than you. While that may be true, you can use it to your advantage, but most people take it negatively. They believe that if someone is better than them, why do the same work that they themselves believe to be worse at? Yet, here's what I have to say. There are going to be millions of people who are better than you, but that's okay, because you have something that is a part of you. It's what you excel at. It's what you're great at. That part of you is a contribution to society itself. You are a crucial piece of the world, even if in such a minuscule value. This concept is crucially important. If we all acknowledge that we all had a part of us that was important to the growth of society, the world would be such a better place. Take for example myself. I have never been great at sports. I've been okay at them, but not great. But do you know why? Because sports are not my special part of me. I'm good at school, I can obtain information easily, and I am a strong leader. That's my special part of me. My knowledge and my sense of leadership. Each of us is born with a special talent. A gift that makes us different from all the rest. It's the part of us that is better than others, and everyone else has a part of them that makes them better than us. Now, you may ask, what can my special talent do on its own? My answer, a lot of things. In a quote by former US President John F. Kennedy, he wrote, one person can make a difference, and everyone should try. The meaning of this quote has been demonstrated by a plethora of people around the globe who wanted to make a difference in their community, and they did it. For a school project, one of my teachers assigned us a civic responsibility project way for us to get back to our community. My partner Natalie and I had some ideas, but none of them stood out to us. Then, the idea hit me. We both had veteran family members, and we appreciated them very much. But then, we realized something. Not all veterans get appreciated by their youth. Take, for example, the veterans at the Wisconsin's Veterans Home in King, Wisconsin. All of them have served our country with honor and with courage. Yet we pondered, how much appreciation do they actually get from the youth of their community? Following large sums of research, we determined that they got very little appreciation compared to what they should be getting. Following this realization, the Kids at King Project was born. It had the goal to give veterans a connection with the youth of our community to make their lives better by providing them with appreciation and conversation. In the following months, my partner and I split up the workload based on our specialized talents, hers being perseverance and creativity and mine being leadership and communication. Even though the process was initially difficult, I persisted. Through my preeminent efforts, I received a grant from Thriven Financial. I worked directly with the leadership at the Veterans Home. I organized lunch for our student volunteers and organized transportation. I even made it my obligation to organize a performance group to play patriotic and classical music to make the veterans smile. After all this hard work was done by both Natalie and I, a truly wonderful day took place. Veterans smiled with great joy. The youth that volunteered learned so much about our country's past and its heroes. Stories of past endeavors of bravery and sacrifice were shared. All in all, the event was largely successful, and I am truly grateful for everyone who volunteered. In doing this event and going through the process, I was taught a great lesson, that one person can make a difference, no matter how small. Similarly, one person can make a tremendous difference while in a group. In working together, aiming towards the same goal, a group can achieve magnificent benefits. For example, 
My school district in Nina recently attempted to pass a referendum to obtain funds to fix our schools. They were asking for a large amount of money, which is okay, yet most students didn't understand exactly what a referendum would entail. So, all the students, including me, in my AP Government and Politics class made lessons plans and informed each and every student in our school on what the referendum would entail. After we finished our lessons, we had the students take a survey asking if they would support our referendum. After this, a smaller group of students and I then analyzed the data and made a presentation. Initially, it didn't seem like we'd get anything done. We had hit a roadblock. Then we all realized something. We each had our own gifts and talents, and once we acknowledged them, we got a lot more done than we had did previously. We ended up presenting our findings to our middle school principal and our district superintendent. We learned that all of us had special skills that would give us a greater satisfaction in the end. Everyone's singular talents are predominantly important. Being one is essential, as our, as our gifts are indispensable. To sum up my speaking, I would like to end with a quote by myself. What's largely common in our world today is that being of one makes you insignificant. That statement is false. One person can make a difference, no matter how small. Thank you very much.